Hi, I would like to introduce uh, a new scheme, which is anonymous signature scheme that is based on hash. I have numerous uh, co-authors. Uh, Nada and uh, Yalan are in the room, and uh, the other two, Tanya and uh, Chris, are not. Okay, first thing first, digital signature, everybody familiar with, I believe. And for digital signature, we have a signer and a verify. And the signer uses the signer's private key, and verify uses the signer's public key. Together with the signer's certificate, we also call the credential which is issued by certificate authority. If you want to add the revocation properties, you use a public key revocation list. So that is a common knowledge. I believe everybody agreed, uh, understand here. Pay attention about uh, the verify side, public key certificate, public key revocation. That is traditional digital signatures. So in EPID signature, the changing part is from verifying the point of view. The verify does not have a signer's public key, does not have signer's certificate, but a verify use certificate authority, CA's public key to verify signature. And also for revocation, verify does not give a public key revocation list, but I have two different revocation lists. One is a secret key revocation list. Another one is a signature-based revocation list. Probably you will see secret-based revocation list is not quite useless because a better guy may not review their secret key. Then signature-based revocation list is a powerful one. Yeah, so we have two revocation lists. Based on this, we have interesting uh, EPID properties. As all the signatures and forgeability is, of course, uh, needed to have. Then we also have uh, anonymity. Anonymity is because Verify does not have public key and certificate, only have certificate, uh, certificate authorities public key. So signer is actually hiding in the group. The group is everybody got a certificate from the same certificate authority. Secret key revocation is quite obvious, but it's quite hard to achieve. That is only based on if the secret is actually viewed to public uh, to the verify in the revocation list, uh, then verify can check every single signature is signed by this key or not. Signature based revocation list uh, is a unique feature for EPID. So that is the one we are going to pay more attention. Why we care about this? We care about this is EPID is a real scheme, a real protocol. It's happened in every Intel's security chip, support hardware security, support hardware and, and attestation. So Intel have announced uh, since 2008, they start to issue EPID keys. The message I find is in 2020, 2021, the latest one I can find. They said since uh, 2008, they ha have already shipped 4.5 billion EPID keys. Now three years past, it's probably much more. For some reason in their document, they say that in 2016, which I think is probably a typo, but since I quote them, I kept keep everything here. 
history of EPID. EPID scheme was published in 2007 by two Intel colleagues. And then uh, a year later, they put it in Intel chip. Then after a few years, uh, they carry on to work out a more efficient EPID scheme. In 2013, the uh, EPID scheme, which is elliptical curve based, is uh, specified in ICIC standard and also adopted by TCG, put it in the TPM um, 2.0 specification. So that is a currently broadly used EPID scheme. Since we are moved to the PQC, now the research in the PQC-based uh, EPID is also coming. We have seen a few lattice-based uh, EPID. Also, the performance is not great, but uh, the scheme is there. Then we also have seen one example published in 2019 is a hash-based EPID. That is the first and the only EPID based on symmetric setting. Uh, but in their paper, they didn't have uh, the implementation, didn't have a lot of performance analysis. Also, we find um, the how to make a key revocation is not quite clear yet. That's why we carry on this work. We try to make more efficient EPID scheme based on the symmetric setting and also give uh, efficient key revocation functionality. So that was our goal. Hash-based uh, signatures, we already know there are a lot of uh, uh, examples in digital signature side, including one time signature, field time signature, state for signature, stateless signature, those are all quite well known and standard. We also see anonymous signatures, including ring signature, group signature, direct anonymous attestation, and as I mentioned, the one example of EPID. What are actually the challenge to EPID from the symmetric settings, we can see there are at least two things that are not easy to achieve. The first one is signature-based revocation. Signature-based revocation means you put every single signature, you find the, the uh, signer probably not behave correctly, you want to the signer will not be able to make any signatures you want to accept. You want to accept. You put a signature in revocation list. Then every single signer to make a signature needed to prove I'm not any one of those signature owner. You can imagine the signature-based revocation is quite uh, time consuming because it's dependent on the size of the list. Yeah, that is a bottleneck of the performance. This is first the difficulty part. The second difficulty part is about anonymity and group signs. Because a signer hiding themselves in a group, the group means everybody got a certificate. If the group is huge, like the Intel say the 4.5 billion keys, that is a huge group. Although Intel may not have every single EPID keys in the, uh, the certified by same issuer, but maybe it is, they never say that quite clearly. But we have to prepare the group could be huge. So we want to have a group size which is able to deal with probably much more than 4.5 billion. 4.5 billion is three years ago history. So we give our own target is two to the 60. So that's the second challenge is not easy to achieve. Our solution is 
we carefully choose uh, a digital signature scheme as a group credential, and then allow this uh, signature scheme be able to handle very large number of uh, signatures. That is achieve larger group. Then we also carefully implement our schemes to make the implementation deliberately separate uh, the signature revocation part and the credential zero knowledge proof part. That is allowed us to make the impact of those two to each other as low as possible. So now I give you a bit of detail about our scheme. Input to the signer are four things. You can see the four little icon. And signer's private key, signer is sender, sender's private key, and the signature revocation list, SRL, certificate authorities public key, and the certificate issued by the CA. Those four things are input to the signer. Then signer make a signature, the signature including two type of zero knowledge proof. The first part is zero knowledge proof of credential. I have credential, but I'm not showing you the credential. I prove to you, I have it, you believe me. And the second zero knowledge proof is I have not been revoked. So you can check all the revocation list based on signatures, I'm not any one of them. Okay. So this are the EPID signatures in principle. Then I'm going to introduce only two things here. One is the knowledge proof of not being revoked, that uh, the, the blue little uh, clock. And uh, the second one is uh, I have certificate, I zero knowledge proof for you. So for not being revoked, I only probably briefly introduce this complicated part. So this part is the main contribution of our, this, uh, our, our paper. We have a key pseudo random function F. F is uh, like uh, any uh, hash function with key. So you have two input, one is key, one is uh, the, the message. Then sinus uh, secret key SKU used uh, as a in first input as a key, of course. Then we have uh, a signature ID, which could be a message plus uh, the uh, random random data strings and hash it. Computer uh, F function get the point of SST, which is a signature uh, signing token. Then if a signature revocation list record the two things, signature ID and the signature signing token, only those two bits, not anything else not uh, how you prove joint uh, credentials, that's all not relevant. Only take those two in the uh, signature-based revocation list. Then you prove it, but uh, the tricky bit is you prove you are not any one of them. But uh, if you actually not any one of them, when you do two signatures, your two signature cannot be linked. Otherwise, you leak message, yeah? If you are one of them, you cannot be avoided to be catched. You actually one of them, you have to be revoked. So our scheme is you compute a hash, uh, that's a F function, which is pseudo random function with your own key assigner and your signature ID. So that gave you first element, SST, and then you compute <coughs> using your key to demonstrate you are not any one of those in the revocation list, but hiding yourself with the proof. 
So that is called AJ, this value. Yeah. So this value is actually the double F. You hide in yourself in the first F, then this first F became a key, and with the random nonce, compute the second F that got an AJ message. I don't know who is the PC member give our valuable comments, say, you can compute BJ by the verify. In our original paper, we say that you compute AJ and BJ. If they are equal, you catch. If they are not equal, means you're not. Then when PC, anonymous PC member said, Sina does not have to compute BJ and verify can do it. That's a wonderful idea. Yeah. So I don't know who is this uh, very far. I have to, yeah, <laughs> we want to publicly thank you. This very far gave excellent idea. Okay, that's it, it works. Uh, now I can very uh, briefly introduce the remaining part. You will get the ideas. For the remaining part is to prove the credential. To prove credential, we first choose a hash-based signature as a credential. So that is signed by CA, and we choose the uh, SPINS Plus. But uh, the difficulty for SPINS Plus is it's not zero-knowledge proof friendly. We have to modify SPINS Plus, so we did it. Then I already said that we separate two zero-knowledge proofs, but we cannot only separate the two proofs. We have to also glue them together to make them joint, because you have to demonstrate you are the single signer with the SKU to prove the both credential and not being revoked. Okay, so very briefly, this is the SPINS Plus which is a hybrid tree. And the bottom line of the tree is a field time uh, signature that is called a false. Then the between trains is a one time signature that is a WOTS. If you're familiar with uh, uh, Sphinx Plus expert like Scott, and uh, you don't <laughs> need to pay much attention to this, but otherwise, uh, Try to remember these pictures for a few seconds. The difficulty is uh, FOTS plus is not quite zero knowledge proof friendly. We haven't found the uh, right way to, to prove it. And the force is zero knowledge proof uh, can be done but uh, it's not easy to make uh, a partial proof allowed us to prove it efficiently. So in our work, we change into those two parts. First changing is to the force. The force is we only change in the top part, not make a hash one by one, but we in replace it with a small Merkle tree. Okay. So that's a minor change. The this minor change allowed us to make a partial proof. So make the, the zero knowledge proof only need a few dots to get to the root uh, without proof it step by step. Put those together for Sphinx Plus, we modified it as, uh, we called it F Sphinx Plus with two bi bigger different. One is the force became the M force, and the FOTS also replaced with the M force. The whole thing is joined the M force. Yeah. Okay, now I conclude my talk. We proposed a new hash based EPID scheme, and our main contribution for this one is to demonstrate how signature-based revocation can be done in a reasonably efficient way. And uh, we implemented it, we proved it, and the security was proved in the UC model. 
And the implementation, we believe this is the first implementation for hash-based EPID. Uh, you can check the detail about the implementation result. I have to say it's not very efficient altogether, but uh, this is still early stage work. Uh, I'm sure the more research is needed to improve the performance and make it more practical. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah, one time for one quick question. Thank you for the very nice talk. It was uh, it was very good and well presented. Um, I just had one question about, so you talked a little bit about the implementation performance uh, in the end. Uh, how about the kind of bandwidth that you can achieve uh, in terms of the size of the credentials and the size of the proofs that you get in the end? Okay. The size of credential is just uh, the Sphinx Plus signature, which yeah. the same size. And the size of the EPID signature, which is very large, uh, is a few megabytes. Okay. So it's not quite uh, practical. But uh, this size is the sa similar to lattice-based EPID. We also did work for lattice-based EPID, and uh, those two are more or less the same size. So that means they both need improvement. I see. And do you see the improvements coming from more zero knowledge proofs or more on the signature side? Yeah, more zero knowledge proof based signature that is a one step for us to prove the credential. Although the credential itself is Sphinx Plus signature, but we need to prove every hash value goes, not every hash value in the whole train, every hash value in the in the OS path. I see. Yeah. That's why the, the science is much larger than the single zero knowledge proof hash, and uh, the hash based uh, single proof. And if I have 30 Thank seconds, uh, just about the, the implementation performance, uh, what is the most time consuming? Is this the, the still the revocation proof or more the uh, signature based, uh, the, the, the um, signature proof verification? If the signature revocation list is small, then the most time consuming things is the credential proof. But if the uh, revocation list is large, that could be easily dominated. I see, thank you, thank you. Because the credential proof is constant but uh, the uh, signature base, zero, not, the uh, revocation is linear revocation list. 